All right, welcome to our second feature match for week one here in Plane Chase League. And we have our uh, reigning 2022 Player of the Year, Cody Race, who's actually going to be uh, giving us uh, two matches tonight. The second of which is going to be a, a stipulation match, which we'll get into later. Um, and he's taking on Chris York, who's a two-time league winner, our tournament organizer, and actually had had quite quite a run of in our feature match area in the last league. Uh, almost almost got three got a win three weeks in a row, but uh, has had an impressive showing here. So Justin's going to be looking at Chris Chris York's hand, and looks like he's starting off with a wayward servant here. Uh, and Cody's playing a black red deck, so. Uh, I played. I actually played York <laughs> a few hours ago, and he's playing a sort of grindy black-white value uh, value deck here. So, uh, what's what's he looking at in hand here? Okay, well, besides the black-white grindy value deck, he does have a forest in hand. So, yeah, he, I, was, he, he, does, he does have surprise green cards, I guess. Yeah, he was splashing some green, but his deck uh, he was without green for many, 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 many turns against me, and uh, he still won quite quite handily. So <laughs> he also has animal sanctuary in hand, but doesn't have anything that really benefits from it okay. at the moment. Yeah, so Cody's got a got a few good ones in hand here. He's got a Phyrexian Rager. Always like to see that. Fetid Imp, Village Rights, two lands, and he has uh this Subira Tulzidi Caravaner. So uh, all all the made up words all at one place at one time. Oh that's that's the right card with many uh with many words on it. Yeah, I think you can uh, you can tap it to give uh, a two power creature unblockable, and then later you can uh, discard your hand and draw draw some amount of cards when your creatures hit something like this. Looks like uh, he might just be throwing an agonizing siphon or just a very over helix. <laughs> Cody's talking to viewers through uh, friend requests, pulling up a friend request and typing things. He's okay. uh, always the showman here. He always likes to put on a good show, like uh, we saw in the last league with his stipulation match, and then he has another one coming up tonight. So uh, he's getting ready to cast a Rager here. Or at least yeah, Chris, Chris doesn't really have much going on right now. He has two lands that destroy evil and invoke the divine, which does not hit anything. He has no good targets for any of his like interaction, so he needs to find creatures. Yeah, he needs to start blocking here. But uh, you don't you don't really want to block a sky cave skyclave shade, and uh, you feel a bit bad blocking a rager too since it, it gets a card. Like yeah, crit, crit, like these cards are already like, diff, like you know you don't really want to kill them. And Chris just top decked a murder, which doesn't really help at the moment. Besides, kill off a rager. Yeah, he Cody could just village rights here for value if he wants to, but he decides against it. Right, he's got a Sprouting Goblin, which uh, without a source of green is just a 2-mana 2-2 two -two that you can sack lands to draw cards later, which is still passable. Always better when you can kick it, but still very, very playable, regardless. Yeah, so. yeah, I like it. Uh, yeah, Chris really desperately needs to find a creature just to defend himself from uh, the so Skyclave Shade, primarily. So Cody, Cody's going to take his 2-for-1, he's going to cast... I think he he was he he, he 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 clicked on the kicker cost uh, longingly. I think uh, wishing he could kick it, but he'll he'll settle for a two two here, especially when his opponent's not doing anything. So uh, the cinder plasm in in Cody's hand isn't isn't looking uh, too hot here, but uh, in case things really go wrong, he has that as as backup. He has a village right okay. here, so uh, if if one of his creatures gets targeted, he can just sack it and draw two. Chris has actually found disposal mummy, so if he actually if the sky he could murder the skyclave shade and then disposal it, okay. So he can t get it back. Yeah. So Cody is still still gonna you know get some value off of this whole deal. So he's uh, yeah. So he's drawing a Thran portal and a, a skyclave sentinel, which is that the three mana two three with kicker. I can make it a four five. Is this what is the Thran me? portal? It's a uh, it's a land from DMU. It comes in uh, tapped unless you control two or fewer lands. I think. You basically uh, you, you choose whatever color you want, but it deals you a damage every time. Oh uh, yeah, it's the card. It's the unassuming card that like uh, it it takes like all the boxes, but not really. Yeah, that that is at the a, second a best disposal mummy I've ever seen. The What's best, the best one? Uh, in Hour of Devastation, I uh, I killed a Scarab God and then uh, got it with the disposal mummy before the ah uh, yes okay brought it back to the hand. So that still stands as the best disposal mummy I've seen, but this is uh, this is up there. 
So this Dragon oh, Portal oh, oh. looks to be just uh, just sort of like a, a dual lander. It's not really helping him splash here. So he drew it just, earlier. He could have potentially kind of kicked a, his goblin. It's just kind of a pain. It's just kind of a pain land that always deals you pain. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that card was uh, very niche. Just like, just a, like, not a great way to splash, but sometimes you just needed it. it. It it did give you a basic land type for domain, so there was that. All right, so here's an anointed priest. If you ever get any amount of tokens, you could uh, gain gain back some life here. So, what does the siege breaker do? The four mana. Ability? I believe you pay three or four mana, and you can destroy a creature that was dealt damage. So if your creatures, okay. are, so like if your creatures are threatening to bounce off each other, you can just like make it so they don't. So, you know, okay. if, uh, if, if Chris was to block, you know, a 2-2 two -two with a 1-3, the Ogre Siegebreaker could then kill it. It also works with any, like, cheap burn spell. You can kill a large creature with, like, a shock, you know. So, here of the Sky Clay Sentinel, Chris has Chris found it invoked the Divine target, target. Yeah, I was going to say, you said he had it invoke the Divine, so. Yeah, so Cody's hand's a bit, a bit softer. He has a Cinderclasm, which kills his things. <laughs> And uh, he has a Funeral Longboat, which is that uh, two-mana vehicle. So Cinderclasm deals one damage, and you can kick it to deal another damage? Uh, yeah, so with the Cinderclasm, he could wipe the board of everything except for the Siegebreaker, if he Cinderclasms and then uses the Siegebreaker ability. Let's see if he wants to, to try and do that. So I don't believe you can put the... Uh, I don't believe you can put a counter on this... Uh, Disposal mummy with the animal sanctuary. It's a jackal, no. I believe, rather than a a dog. <laughs> they're they're from the same uh, family, but not quite. Yeah, so he's decided to deal one damage and just ping off. Yeah, so he's decided to go for the one damage option. So he just used his cinderclasm as a one for one removal here. Yeah, I mean sometimes you just do it. It was basically five mana to kill something. Yeah, so here he's comes got the longboat. Yeah, he's got the longboat. I mean, the vigilance could be annoying here. Especially if Chris doesn't have a, a creature capable of blocking it. Okay, well, here comes... Here he embalms the Anointer Priest. Yeah, he's good. Uh, we'll gain that one life. Uh, he's uh, then, crewing to pass priority, but... Little does he know that... There you go. All right, so Soul Seer... There's a five damage uh, removal spell here. I don't know if he... If he wants to push damage, he can, he can uh, get rid of one of those creatures. We could also just attack and uh, make the blocks pretty bad. So the removal spell basically yeah. guarantees uh, a two for one here. If uh, if Chris blocks, which he probably has to. I mean, what you can do here is you can attack with like the longbow and the imp, and if he double blocks the longbow, you just kill both creatures because of your your ogre siege breaker. Yeah, so he's just gonna attack with both. He's gonna make the double block, uh, you know, pretty bad here. It's not even that bad. He only loses one creature. Yeah, well, he's gonna he's gonna get get soul seared here. Oh, I see. Yes. That yeah, makes he's sense. gonna use the removal spell here to to just kill both. Oh, so Cody's drawn an interesting card that uh, he's now checking his graveyard for creature types because he drew Hunting Voyage, which is a call time card that yeah, you can okay. you can you can reanimate two creatures of the same type, but if you foretell it, you just return uh, everything of the same type into play from your graveyard. Or you choose a creature type. Okay, well, he his board right now is an imp, a goblin, and an ogre. Yeah, and he has a and he has a he has a human and a Phyrexian horror in his graveyard. <laughs> so not very uh, not very family like. I mean, it I is think. still just a six mana, you know, reanimate anything, which is not not super efficient. But you know, when you have nothing else to do, you know, just get, get your get get your best get your best creature back for six is still kind of playable. He's foretelling it here just in the off chance that some okay. uh, <laughs> something's piled up in his graveyard. So what's what's Chris's last card here? A uh, destroy evil, which okay. has no target. He does not have any targets. That that, that <laughs> that's correct. Now now wishing that he might have destroyed evil the destroyed evil the uh the skyclave as, as opposed to invoke the divine so he so can kill the long He's gonna hunting voyage, he's gonna pay he's gonna pay a total of nine mana to reanimate. A creature, I believe. Yes. Oh, uh, here it is. I uh, think that's lethal, though. Yeah. It's uh, it's exactly what he needs because of the haste. So, you know, the hunting voyage, uh, it wasn't fancy, but, uh, you know, it got the job done there. Sometimes you just pay nine mana to get back your 2-3 your with haste, and, and it works. 
So uh, <laughs> Cody is making sure that he we we recognize that he has called his deck York on Pains, which is a play on York on Games. So uh, he he wants to create some pain here for Chris uh, Chris York. He I think he sees it as a grudge match. I don't know if, if Chris York sees it as as much. Um, I, think he sees any, I don't think he sees anything as a grudge match. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty good spirit about everything. But as uh, as we were discussing before, they do have uh, these two do have some uh, I'll say philosophical differences on their approach to a strategy in league. You know, Chris York being very by the book. He's the you know he's been the tournament organizer. He's uh, you know very wants to adhere to the rules at all times. And Cody Race is always always trying to find. Uh, find ways around things and uh, come up with new ideas and new approaches. I know when he first came in the league, he would often send uh, messages to her asking like, is this okay? Is this, is this against any rules? I don't want to, I don't want to get, in, I don't want to get in trouble here. I don't want to step on anyone's toes. It's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's a, they're, I think philosophically they've had some uh, disputes over approaches to strategy, but uh you know, they've agreed to duke it out for us for, for, for our entertainment at the end of the day. But uh, as as evidenced by the name of his deck, he is uh, intending on causing pain. Uh, is York uh, doing any sideboarding there? I know he's uh, he usually goes light on the sideboarding from what I've seen. Uh, what we saw he, 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 did, he, he did indeed take out the Destroy Evil, seeing okay. that he had like one target yeah, in the entire game. And uh, yeah, one thing I noticed that he is splashing green, but he's also playing... Lindworm, which is a double green card. Mm, okay, that's yeah, that's a rougher one. So uh, one change that, that uh, Cody made was he cited in Liliana's defeat, which is a uh, one mana just oh, a, just excellent, a excellent card. Yeah, excellent that was, card. Uh, that whole defeat cycle, I think, aside from the green one, was uh, was was pretty good. I think the green one only destroyed a forest. Uh, I think I think you could kill non non creature permanents. Oh, uh, okay. Not so you, green so, so you could kill like a Nissa Planeswalker and some other. Oh, okay, okay. Some other you can kill enchantments. I guess they were green, but uh, yeah. So it looks like both are off to a, a decent little start here. We have a festering mummy and a sprouting goblin. Uh, what's going on in, in Chris York's hand there? Well, he's got some. I I can't. I don't exactly know what this uh, card does. It's called Scourge of the Skyclaves. I know it's a mythic, but I have not seen it very often. Played? Uh, it was. I, I mean, people were saying it had like Death Shadow vibes, but it's definitely not that. It's oh, players lose life if you kick it. Uh, it's equal to twenty minus the the high, the lowest life total, or so, something like this. <laughs> okay. So, I, I, I know yeah. that sometimes if you put it on the stack and put it in play on the early turns, it just dies. Okay. So yeah, Chris has that. <laughs> He's playing his disposal mummy. He has like okay. final reward, pressure point, and battery accolade, which is a very card okay so he's got uh, he's got a little bit of uh interaction here i mean pressure point not not super impactful but uh, you know it cycles it taps something down he does have action but he unnotably he is missing a second white so source to be able to Cody's play that gonna, badly, badly. okay so interesting use of splendid agony here instead of killing off a creature he's just going to make them both small interesting uh -huh. now he's playing zealot of the god pharaoh which was a card that originally was, I believe, in a Planeswalker deck, but then was printed as part on uh, when Amonkhet came to Arena. It just got put in the main set in Amonkhet Remastered here. It's getting siphoned. Yeah, Chris just top decked that one. Pretty good yeah. target to, to siphon. Yeah, that, like, that, we did see yeah. a couple of feature matches back that the Zealot God Pharaoh did get a cartouche of a black cartouche on it and started just, like, siphoning life from the opponent. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Uh... I do remember that I played against that in a draft, and I um, I almost did not win the game because I just assumed it had reach. Because now just like any creature that has a bow and arrow in their art has reach nowadays. So yep. uh, I did not attack my flyer into it, thinking that it had reach. And then when my opponent attacked me with it, I realized, okay, it doesn't have reach. Why are they attacking me? But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just so used to these, like, all these creatures that are holding a bow and arrow are just... So he's going to pressure point here just to cycle, I suppose. He's going to sack a land yeah, here. I mean, uh, Cody's hand, aside from the Soul series, just got two other swamps. So he, he wants to draw some action here. If Chris does play a good creature that's five toughness or less, though, uh, the Soul Seer will probably target it. But until then, Cody's just going to need to draw something impactful here. Okay, so he found a second white source, which is what he wanted. 
lets him cast Vajra's Acolyte. The fifth land lets him cast Final Reward. He he could cast most of his spells now. Yeah, but this attack here is just basically, I mean, you know, this Feshing Mummy is essentially killing two creatures. I mean, you know, making this a zero one is essentially taking it out of taking it out of relevancy at all. Oh, I forgot to add a counter, not just till end of turn. Yeah, it was uh, unique in that sense. That's okay, a- well he he has a blood for bones, which we'll find a use for this disposal mummy if he ever wants to bring something back from the graveyard. Yeah, that's the you sack a creature and then you get to reanimate and grave dig at the same time, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Cody wants to tell us something here. Uh, spells, please. Yes, we we agree. <laughs> So you've got, I'm assuming he just has three lines in hand. Uh, he has a soul seer. Uh, okay. and, then he, he, and then he added hashtag 420 because, uh, sure. Well. <laughs> uh, yeah, so not, not the most exciting blood for bones here, but I mean, you just, just got to be practical here. Just got to just gotta put things into play. So I wonder if I Cody wants to use his uh, soul seer here. Probably not. He's just going to sack lands. Yeah, he's just going to look for action here. Well, more, more blood for bones basically just undid the entire board position, except that now Chris has a favorable yeah, advantage. Yeah, so he's drawn his uh, Subira here. The the Caravaner. So, so the, the first ability... Back. Second ability is discard your hand, and then in creatures with power two or less hit opponent, you draw a card. Yeah, and the, the first ability is... Uh, it, it, it can target itself. I, 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 can it? Right. Yes. No, it says another. Oh, no, no, it says another there. target creature with power two. Yeah, this card has a lot of words on it, and it was like in one of like the least played sets, which was M twenty one. Like this was just a set that just didn't did not get played very much. So, uh, yeah, it has a lot of abilities, but uh, you can make something else that's small unblockable, and then you can tap it and discard your hand. And whenever you hit with small creatures, you can draw a card, and it can give them unblockable still. So, uh, you know. Uh, Useful little card, not a bomb, but uh, you know it has it has its uses. He's deciding if he uh, wants to attack here, Cody. but he was thinking about maybe attacking with the goblin, giving it unblockable. But figures he'd just rather sit back here. Yeah, so he's looking at animal sanctuary and he's looking at the creature, which is clearly dog-like, but uh, is a jackal yeah. technically. Does not fit the uh, does not fit the bill here. <laughs> so Chris is trying to find a reward here. I feel like it might have been worthwhile to play the Acolyte. I know I know it's like not it makes your creatures big enough to get past your opponent's board, and you're fine if they go to double block, because that means you get to kill whatever you want. Yeah, I mean putting a counter on the story seeker is uh, pretty big here. And he also gets to like foretell the he gets a count board, first of all, for his animal sanctuary. And he also gets to foretell his Turgrid Shadow that he has in mm-hmm. hand. Here's another so overall, I, card. Uh, this two mana, effectively a two mana two one flying here. Yes, I think if you cast a bolas, you can sack it to destroy something. But uh, okay, not, so now, now here comes the badger. I card. will not be holding my breath for the uh, the bolas being cast. <laughs> All right, so here comes the badger Acolyte, which is a which is a cat. So relevant for the sanctuary. So he's gonna pump up these creatures here. So I believe it has to put on other creatures. If I yes, it. Yes, it's not uh, our good old Gavany Weaponsmith from uh, Midnight Hunt. Yeah, that was. Yeah, well, no, this one has lifelink, so it's uh, it's a different card, but uh, it, it, it it bounces out a bit more. Yeah. So he's Still, deciding uh, if he wants to try and block here, but the, the the blocks don't look very good. He could just soul sear the one of the creatures, he's deciding what he wants to do. Yeah, but Bowser's Acolyte showing off its power makes your creatures able to outmuscle board and like make it very awkward for your opponent. Yeah, that card was particularly good in that set. I remember White Green was one of the better decks, and it was the plus one counters deck, which often is an archetype that comes up short and limited. But they they pushed it just enough that set, and that was a that was a very very important card in that deck. Yeah. All right, so he's deciding which creature he wants to send the damage to. He's just going to target the one with the higher toughness. The three four. Yeah, probably easier to get the three three off the board than it's, the three four. Yeah, it's better better for potential double blocks in the future if you can't find removal. So what is uh what is okay, so he has the foretell here. 
Yeah, he foretells the turret with Shadow just in case things go south and he, Chris loses his board. Yeah, the sacrifice too. All right, so this this is a this is a pretty nice draw here. This Draugr's Helm is uh, it is it is impactful. Like you get a four four first off right away, and then basically you can turn anything into a into a big threat. Plus two plus two menace is gigantic. Yeah, I, I foresee this uh, zombie getting murdered. So it's an expensive equip at uh, at four, but. As long as you're not too far behind on board and you, you, you know, you just make, make anything large. Okay, so he's he's going to get his, he's going to get, you know, the village rights here. He's going to get to draw two, see what he can pick up here. But uh, he's getting attacked for five, unfortunately, for him. And he's found a swamp and a mountain. And he's uh, not, but he, not happy about it. <laughs> his badger's accolade has taken a trip to the animal sanctuary and now is a bit too better off for it. Hmm. I'm I'm all for that. I'm uh, I, I do like cats, so uh, I can't say I dislike that that cat getting getting bigger. But uh, so he's gonna equip here. Yes, equip might be better off equip. Might be a better off equipping the sprouting goblin. Yeah, equip like the that. sprouting goblin, and then he can he can crew with the uh, with the wasp. So he can. Uh, you know, but this animal sanctuary is, uh, you know, this is now a threat now. This this Bazri's acolyte, he's gonna have to double block it. If he wants Chris to continues to draw. Chris continues to draw really good hitters and draws eliminate. All right, so that, that that'll kill off whatever he needs to to die. So uh, he gets the crew at least here. So it's yeah, not, he gets the crew. It's not all for naught. Can put a counter on the acolyte and then attack with both. Yeah, he's really squeezing, squeezing the pressure here. And this uh, three-color mana base with a colorless land is uh, working out just fine this game. I don't think he's played a single green card though, so it's really just yeah. It's been a black. It's a it's a black white deck with a, a forest. Yeah, that's what I noted when I played him. His green was very minimal, to the point where he could probably uh, cut it very very soon. So here comes the animal san forcing the animal sanctuary activation. Yeah. I don't actually hate this play because now it makes it so Chris York actually can't play anything else and it gives you like a draw into not a so bad board state. Yeah, but now, now Cody has to draw something or else he just dies. Yeah. Okay, so he's drawing a Nirmana Sky Dancer, which usually you cast with Flash, but uh, he's gonna have to cast he's gonna have to cast the sorcery speed here to to be able to rumble with, with the story seeker. Well, he's milled two green cards there, bite down and pack mate, which was a mythic common. Yeah, that pack mate was very nice. I think if I think if you are green, uh, I think if you are green, the <laughs> and, and you lose a match, that is that is uh, one of the number one cards you want to see in common here in week one where we're opening call time. You're just hoping where's that pack mate? All right, well, Cody has uh, written written uh, a word that. Is vulgar, <laughs> so I won't repeat it there. But uh, he was not pleased with how that game uh, panned out there. Just, just too many lands. So he's taking out the Liliana's defeat because there weren't many black creatures being played that game. <laughs> it was mostly removal spells. <laughs> yeah. Well, he saw he saw black white in the first game, so he said, "Okay, well, we'll, we'll kill black creatures." But really, <laughs> he didn't play any black creatures that game. I still think there's merit to keeping the defeated. And, like, your opponent may have not played black creatures, but he certainly had some in the deck. So, he's Cody, like, he um, yeah. I, I will note he's looking to bring in Goblin Bird Grabber, which, uh, according to him, after several practice matches, uh, is actually bugged and does not actually work properly. But I think he just brought it in as a 2 mana 2 one. So, uh, beware all of those with a Goblin Bird Grabber in your pool. Uh, it appears that the card does not work properly, it does not gain flying. <laughs> Interesting. So, I think, he, I think he just brought it in as just a uh, just a thing to do in the early game. Yep, so Chris uh, has kept a very stable hand. Okay. Just two drops and four lines with oh. an iron verdict. Alright, well, there's a, there's, there's a cat coming up here. The Ember Cat. So if he, if he, if he finds an elemental, maybe he can, he can ramp it out. But, uh, the rest of his hand, he has two lands, Scorching Dragonfire, so nice removal spell there, Haunting Voyage, which we saw in the first game, and Carter Doom Scourge, so another call time card there. And he's drawn a Pyro, 
Plastic Helion, which is, uh, despite its appearance, it's a Helion, not, not an Elemental, so you can't ramp that is up that, with the is, cat. Is that the 8 drop that gets reduced for highest power on your on your uh, field? No, it's a 5 mana 4 5. It's from Zendikar, and if you bounce a land, you can uh, deal 2 to your opponent. Oh, I see. There's been many Helions recently, so... Yeah, and they're usually uh, big red creatures. Yeah, so he doesn't... You know, Cody unfortunately doesn't have a play this turn. He can just... Uh, he can leave up Scorching Dragonfire, or he can foretell his Haunting Voyage. But as we saw last oh, time, Haunting yeah. Voyage, sometimes, you know, you can just cast it for six on turn six, maybe, and get back one or two things. Probably one. Like, yeah, he, he, he didn't have to foretell it last, the last, last time we saw it. Well, when you need to play creatures, you play Toxic Abomination. <laughs> I, I feel like this card would have been much better as a 2-3 that lost 2 life when it came in. Just make it a 3-3, three, three, honestly. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Uh, then it might have been a bit too good. Uh, I, I can't imagine it would be too good. But, uh, well, he's going to make he's gonna make this Toxic Abomination attack, which I think Chris York was going to do anyway. So. <laughs> so, is there a reason why he, the Scorching Dragonfire wasn't fired off at the end of the turn? Uh, he just figured maybe this Toxic Abomination isn't worth it. He's at 20. He can take the 3. He'd rather hit something like, that he's actually scared of. I see. Yeah. So he was thinking about Dragonfire. Like, he dragged it around a bit, indicating that he was thinking about casting it, but he's decided against it. Here comes the Mythic Uncommon, Sir, uh, Mythic Common, Sir Wolf's Hackmate. I'm telling you. That card is, uh, card is very, very good. I think we forget how good it is now that we live in a world where Inspiring Overseer uh, exists as a magic card. But uh, the card the card is still very good. Okay, well, that's getting scorched. Yeah. So that one, he Don't says, want... uh, that one I'll kill. I'll, I'll kill a 3-3 three, three that draws, draws a card, but I won't kill a 3-2 that makes my opponent lose 3 life. Though the cards, uh, on, on this board, the cards are not, not that different. <laughs> yes. But I think he said uh, he's not allowed to have a, a good card in play. He's allowed to have an abomination. Yeah, so again, Cody just like his turns aren't, aren't super efficient here. Like he doesn't have another play. He just has a village rights in case Carter gets gets targeted. Which well, which he will. This village rights has uh, has worked out every single game here. I and mean, he's drawn a torment of hailfire, which is uh, <laughs> quite a finisher. Uh, yeah, never, that. Yeah. Commander All Star, right there for yeah, finishing that, game. That card never really shined in uh, in one in a one v one format. Uh, I know I've I've finished out games of Commander <laughs> with that one for X equals uh, you know upwards of twenty or so. Yeah, in limited, typically when you see this card, you're going to see it happen for like maybe five or six. Yeah, which which will have a good impact on the game, but. Yeah, so he's going to play a 4 or 5 here, which, unless Chris can remove it, will we'll give him a stable stable blocker here. Well, Chris has top-decked a Deadly Alliance to get rid of anything. Right. Like, Chris's deck just chock full of removal, and, like, yeah. you know, top deck <laughs> removal is not uncommon for his deck. He killed, like, all my creatures <laughs> in one of the games that we played. I just looked I just looked at my graveyard and his, and I was like, wow, he cast, like, 4 or 5 removals. And that was just in whatever, like, the top third of his deck. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's like in every pack opening pack he had, he had a, a black. Yeah. It seems. All right, so Cody's got some options here. He has five mana to work with, but he can really only do one thing this turn. Uh, it just has to choose what he wants to do. So he can, he has a, a he could Soul Seer or Deadly Alliance, and he has a Nimana Sky Dancer as well that he can cast. So he can cast one of those cards. Uh, I guess he could probably just pass the turn then. All those cards are instant speed. Yep, he doesn't have to, to opt to do anything now, but either way, it's like whatever he does is not going to be super mana efficient here. But it's probably just, he's just going to get the 3-2 off the board. He's just deciding how he wants to approach that. I so figure, I, I you think Deadly Alliance is the, is, the, is the best option because it uses all of his mana. Yeah, it would be not bad. But uh, you said he had Haunted Voyage in his hand, right? Yeah. Well, th th thankfully, Chris York pulled up uh, Cody's graveyard and showed us that he had no duplicates of any type. He has <laughs> currently a Helion, 
a demon berserker and, uh, and an uh, elemental. Uh, it's an elemental cat. Right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Very. very <laughs> you know, it could it could matter. The yeah. Cat so part. Uh, he's got a deadly alliance here, which means that if he draws a line next turn, he could play. T he could play his two three drops. I think that's the that's that's the conclusion here. So. Uh, for, for, choosing for, to yeah for for all his uh, for all his showmanship and uh, and all that uh, Cody does 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 take a lot of deep thought into his play though sometimes it seems like he's doing things off the top of his head but uh, he actually does does take a lot of time to think about uh, what to do here so the mummy is going to dispose of that helium doesn't want that coming back ever all right so now the now the deadly alliance play has paid off because he can now cast two spells this turn. He could also just cast Haunting Voyage if he wants to reanimate one thing, but I assume he's going to do Soul Seer and uh, the Sky Dancer. Though the Sky Dancer, unfortunately, does not block either of these creatures. So Reanimating Cardor doesn't seem that bad, actually, because you actually just you, you actually just eat you can eat one of the creatures. Because yeah. it forces the enemy to attack into a creature that will just eat them. Yeah, that works. So I mean, there. it'll be eating it. I'll be eating on a Northrop Priest because Chris York has a Basri's Accolade in hand to uh, pump his two creatures. Yeah, he might. Uh, I guess he's still. Uh, he's at nine. He could take three. Yeah. All right, so he's going to name Berserker as the creature type which he'd like to reanimate two creatures of that type, but uh, he just has the one here. We got a nice little animation there. And now these creatures Chris have York to attack. Chris York has top decked a Blood for Bones, which will do some damage on the following turn. Uh, I will say that uh, his draws have been pretty good throughout this uh, this match so far. Yeah, d timely removal, timely, like, good spell, very often. It might just be that he's a good player, and I uh, I, I, I don't say that often about people. <laughs> All right, well, he's so, not a very uh, solid deck. Yeah. He also has drawn two of the three forests in his deck for whenever he draws his Ravenous Lindworm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's working well. I, I, it's very well. It's working really well. All according to plan, as we say. Yeah. Uh, Cody's, I uh, don't think things are working all to plan uh, this last, you know, the last two games here. Um, he certainly can keep himself alive. He has the souls here. Uh, again, this, this the amount of Sky Dancer is pretty awkward here. It doesn't, doesn't block anything, but... Uh, if he kills something in combat while it's attacking, I believe he gets to. So, okay, so he can also torment here for. Oh. Oh wait, the torment the, for five. That uh, forces Chris. That forces Chris to sack two creatures, discard yeah. his last card, and take, go to one. Yeah, so this is the, the, this is where we see this card uh, doing doing work. So he's gonna discard. So he's gonna sack both creatures, discard cards, and then take six. All right. Yes. That is uh, that is an efficient use of the card. And the so. torment, the torment, as we say, just a finisher. That's all it is for limited, really. Yeah, and you have to, you, you have to. The, the game has to have have moved in a direction where you can where you can really make use of it. Like in, yeah. in, in, in some percentage of the games, it just you'll it'll just be in your hand. You'll be like, I can't do anything with this, or it's just not going to do enough. Well, this is the kind of game where it works best, and where like everyone's even. Yeah, and you're trading like, off. That's the thing when you because like if, yeah, if, yeah. if the board's built out and you're just stalled, you know it can wipe out a few creatures, but it's not going to wipe out everything. So he's going to one, and now he's uh, sacking things. So uh, you know he needs a nice. If he doesn't have a good draw here, uh, you know. I mean, the Wayward Servant is actually not bad because he will be, when he embalms the Anointed Priest, it is a zombie. Yeah, that's that is uh, that is that is two life uh, out of almost nowhere. So he is going to attack here. The Soul Seer can uh, can get rid of both of these creatures, and then uh, yeah, so then he's going to have Cardor, and then he has the Sky Dancer behind. So uh, now it's it's on York to find something here. It's it. It seems very reminiscent of game one, where like York had the double block and the Soul Seer is nails the coffin in. Yeah, it's like torment of Hellfire. You know, this is uh, this is what you put. This is what you put that card in your deck for, right? Like that. That is a situation for what you put it in your deck for uh, when it can just turn that game on its head 
uh, cha- basically changed everything, right? Chris York had had yeah. his two creatures there. He was attacking. It was looking okay. He had one card in hand. He had a you know seven life, which facing that one creature is you know fine. And uh, then it, <laughs> it all went away with one card. So uh, congratulations to Cody Race for the win there. And uh, we'll be seeing him back uh, in a little bit for yet another feature match. So uh, come back for that uh, in just under an hour.